Good evening, Bill. Good evening, Sandy. It's been too long. It's not been that long. I mean, we have had longer periods apart. Have Have you been working out in the fields today with your check shirt on? <laughs> Don't knock the check shirt. It's got buttons all in the back and the front. Some people. Wait, why does it have buttons in the back and the front? Huh? Why does it have buttons in the front and the back? What's the design feature? Okay. Hmm. Both of them are functional, though, or are they for show? Just for show. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Tempest Fugit, time flies. Especially yes. when I'm having fun with you. Yay! <laughs> Yay us! <laughs> Tempest Fugit, I really want us to talk about the relationship we have with or to time. Mm. Mm. I mean, the preamble you... to the recording was pretty much, in essence, about time. Yeah. A young person I know just turned 20, and I asked her what it's like, the second, how the second decade was. And mm. she says, it went a lot faster than the first. And I said, yeah, that's going to happen. I said, you're on a water slide to 50, lady. <laughs> <laughs> Can you remember in your 20s <laughs> feeling old, though? Yes. Mm. Yeah. I mean, there's the classic thing of I'm going to kill myself if I ever turn 30 because I'm, I'll be old. You know, there's all those sorts of, you know, those stupid kids who say stuff like that. A friend of mine said to me the other day that he didn't think he'd live to be 35 and he just turned 35. What did you do about that then? That's a. Uh... I think he has to recalibrate everything now. Hmm. I loved being yeah. 30. Everything about 30 was kind of glorious, fecund, positive, vital. I only recently feel like I'm an adult. I At 48, only recently do I feel like I don't need to explain my age or my, you know, inadequacies to anyone. I always have to explain my age. I find people have a disconnect with me because I'm small, I think. Yeah, they think you're 16. They, they think I'm they think 12. I'm a child until I open my mouth and I'm a cynical old witch. Yes. Mm. A Disney from a Disney movie, of course. A, a Disney witch. Yeah. Um yeah, the relationship I have to time is con constantly in itself changing. So obviously time is changed, time is changing, everything all around always. But as I get older, I I appreciate time differently. Um, I can also, I think now I have a sense that when I look back, um, I can look back and understand the nature of time moving slowly and quickly relative to my perception of things. Sure. But what I haven't yet fully appreciated, even though I know I can see it in the past, is being... I guess, swift enough to understand the nature of time as it's happening. So that's still yeah. a very rare occurrence for me. Is, is Like I can say to you, I'm, I'm in time and I know what time it is and so on. But to actually really understand the nature of time as it's happening requires yeah. it only be in the past because I need to think about it. And that, of course, makes sure. And I think that if you consciously try to understand or wrap your head around the now and your experience of time that itself takes energy and time and so to some extent you're burning time in order to you're burning attention in order to understand how you're using your other attention you know in time so it's it's a real sort of uh eating its own tail kind of thing um at least in my experience. What's outside? Just seen a fox. Oh, really? An actual fox? Oh, yeah. I see foxes all the time. But this fox had a couple of cubs, a vixen. Oh. Anyway, it's like nature watch in my garden. I love it. Anyway, um, yeah. So relationship we have with time and the kind of learning, if we can, to appreciate it as it happens must mean that we are just totally present. And I don't think I've ever encountered anybody else 
who is completely present, though I'm in the present with them. Okay. Mm. Because as soon as I meet somebody, I mean, to relate to somebody is to, sadly, it's seldom to actually commune in the present. Do you see what I mean? So even when we encounter another, we are, we're kind of dealing with or dealing through, seeing through the prism of our conditions. Yeah, sure. Mm. So isn't it ironic that really the only time we seem to know, even though we're always in it, is what's in the in the past. It's the nature of time. Mm. Do you and think I, more about the past or more about the future? Um, I don't think about the future very much. I, I found that quite unusual. And people find it quite disconcerting that I'm not very good with the future. Like, look, I, I, I find lots of people do have a kind of preoccupation with the future. Yeah. Oh, I am going to do this, or I look forward to when I do that. Um, I don't do that so much, even though I do like to plan things and I like to feel quite organized in terms of like a logistical thing. I think that happens when you particularly have a family or dependents and you need to know certain things are happening at certain times. But, you know, sometimes I think, shouldn't I have had a five-year plan? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I've, I've never had anything like that. Neither have I. Yeah. No. That surprises me, actually, Bill, about you. I thought you would maybe I'm, have. I am awful at defining goals. Mm. But as somebody once said, or somebody actually, it was an, it was a interview with of all people, the singer John Mayer that I watched the other day, mm. where he was saying that if you don't define what success is for anything that you're doing, then you're just doomed to be a failure in your own eyes because like you'll never know what success means so even if success is you know i finish the thing and then you can say oh i'm a success he goes if you don't define it at all you're always going to find yourself lacking and that just causes depression and sadness i find that goal setting though i mean i'm encouraged to set goals frequently for work and whatnot for work yeah i hate but, that kind of stuff but also in my personal life I, I now spend a lot of time with somebody who's very goal focused sure and does that work for them i think they're trying to learn how to make it work for them yeah um whereas for me i'm sure i'm infuriating because uh i i don't i don't have that desire to set a goal and i also don't see that setting a goal and putting something in the future creates success which i think a lot of people do believe that the goal is there to be met and therefore it will be yeah uh, whereas i i don't see that i i think that i would rather have almost like a i guess like a multiplicit kind of collage effect of just going along and you know shedding or accumulating whatever i need or don't need in life i think there are some people who like the idea of a roadside out in the distance that they're headed towards whether or not they actually get there or what happens in between mm. i mean art in itself i guess you know people trying to stop time by painting a moment we've spoken about this so many occasions uh, the idea that we are suspending the moment as artists, particularly as photographers, uh, obviously. I was going to say, literally, as if for a lot of photographers, or at least that's the goal. But even mm -hmm. even that at best, you're still only capturing one thousandth of a second of something, and a lot of stuff can happen in a thousandth of a second. Yeah, but what really is the purpose of capturing time? Just to have a memory that doesn't fade in the same way that active actual memory does yeah probably why are we obsessed with the record of it I, um, I still haven't really ever got to the bottom of it I know you do it it's obvious of course well isn't isn't all art to some extent like a record of the present whether it be the present in somebody's state of mind or 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 actual what they see out of their eyes or what they hear in their brain you know 
Mm. I mean, Monet here is recording the light. He was very impressed with the light, as we know, he's an impressionist. Um, mm -hmm. I, but in this particular series, I mean, he went back to the Long Cathedral over and over. He painted it in different light conditions, different times of day, different seasons. Um, it's a beautiful record, actually. Of well, would you would you be this obsessed with a singular thing like this? Um, because this is a bit of an obsession, right? It is. I'm trying to think if there has ever been such a thing in my life, and I, I suspect yes. Um, I return every time I go home to Glasgow. I go to the Botanic Gardens and I photograph Eve, uh, mm -hmm. the statue of Eve, in the Kibble Palace. And she doesn't change, not perceptibly well, to me. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you know, stuff will grow on her, metals and stone will fail. You know what I mean? Like there, there, there is, I bet you over your lifetime, it's actually changed far more than you think. Well, it has. And that's, you know, I, I look at it, especially since I've had Imogen in my life and she's grown now into, you know, nearly a teenager. And, yeah. I, you know, every visit she stands in front of Eve. And so I could almost make a kind of flip book of Imogen going through childhood in front of Eve, the sure. static female. Um, but of course she is changing and my perception of her changes, even though she's a marble statue. Your my daughter's a marble statue? No. No, no, I, you know, uh, the a few weeks ago, we took my mother to the... Uh, uh museum of natural history up in there new york and there's the rose center which is the planetarium and all the rest of it mm -hmm. i remember when the rose center opened 20 something years ago 25 years ago and it was all brand new and now i haven't been there in over a decade and everything's run down and broken mm -hmm. and old and i was like wait this i remember when this was brand new yeah and now it's the old part of the museum you know what i mean or the old it's just it's 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 weird how that happens. Well, I met somebody today at work who um, I was shocked to discover had retired nine years ago. You didn't um, realize that they had retired? No, I knew that she had retired. But if someone had oh. asked me, I would have said, oh, I saw her, you know, last year. Sure. Yeah. What was interesting is that. In my mind's eye. I mean, she was the, she was exactly the same as the last time I'd seen her, but I was greatly yeah. different Yeah. to her. You know, I think it was maybe a bit of a shock for her coming in. The rest of us made bedraggled and haggard by our <laughs> stressful teaching jobs. Um, all that time had passed and yet there was like a total lack of measure. Yeah. Psychologically. Sure. Um, and I, I've reflected a lot on that recently, how, again, this idea of time changing. Time is is changing, but the actual nature of it doesn't change. It's always in some ways the same, isn't it? We've got as much time as we ever had. A minute is always going to be a minute. I mean, some very clever scientist person will tell me, oh, actually, there's some, you know, amazing event that means that sometimes time will warp or whatever but you know for most people time time right. is is a fixed amount that moves in but if you're getting your tooth drilled or if you're you know making out with a new person those that minute will go at very different speeds exactly and um i'm trying to think recently if time has done weird things I mean, time for me at night is a very interesting thing because my sleep is so rubbish. And, you know, nights can be extremely long <laughs> uh, when I'm tired and I can't sleep. Or the day of, the day following a sleepless night, for example, really, really lasts such a long time. And then grateful sleep is so incredibly short. Um... You know, it's it's just started and then it's over, you know. Well, I mean, even 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 these, though, these paintings, this is over the course of a year or two years. Yeah. And 
that is in the course of Monet's life. I don't know. I forget how long Monet lived, probably 70 years old or something, right? Mm. Older than that. Like yeah. this is still only a small percentage, a tiny percentage of his life. But if I said, you're going to be painting the same cathedral for 18 months, you'd think that that was purgatory. You know, that, that would feel like forever. I did three years of daily portraits. Actually, I've done four years of daily portraits now. Mm. But I did three years in a row, you know, from 2017 to 2019. That felt like forever when I was doing it. And now it's been longer that I haven't been doing it mm. since then. You know what I mean? Like that's how quickly the time goes. But these measures, you know, kind of what do they mean? It's not the time that's making no. us feel anything at all. It's our perception of the things that the time is filled with, isn't it? Yes. So in so many ways, time also has this meaninglessness. Yeah, you could live an entire life and really have no experiences. And what was the point of all that time? I mean, do you think you've used your time wisely? No. But does that stop me from wasting, in quote unquote, wasting time now? No. Do you think you've used your time wisely? Um, not always, no. But Do you then, think most people think that they have? No, I, I, I think the interesting thing in it is that I could look at different parts of my life. And again, depending on what position I'm in at whatever age or stage I'm at, I feel differently about the use of my time. So, for example, in my 20s, looking back at my time you know, at art school, for example, feel very differently about the use of the time than I do about it now. So I'm the same person perceiving the same events, but just my experiences have shaped a different appreciation of how well that time was spent. That's not just about experience. That's also even about the, as I said already, like the perception of like the duration of time. Yeah. You know, as I get further from it, the shorter period it seems. You know, the past shrinks back, even though it stretches longer. Yeah. Yeah, everything gets more. It's almost like it gets like sedimentary layers that get packed down. Yeah. the older they are mm. sure how many self-portraits did rembrandt take or, okay. or take uh, over, did, 100. Uh, over 100 is okay yeah i mean where's well, this one from uh this is the last one he painted or there, there were three in his 63rd year and he died okay. not long after uh, i mean the I think painting wise he painted um over 40 but there are actually over 100 in total because he did obviously etchings and sure. drawings uh but like the Rouen series by Monet you know this is a record of just time passing yeah and yeah. a fascinating archive I mean Van Gogh did the same although he didn't live long enough for us to have you know, an overview of a, of, a, of a long life of an artist, but Rembrandt relative to his point in history did actually live quite a long life and he made use of that by painting. Yeah. And, you know, with Rembrandt's self-portraits, we are charting the rise and rise and then fall of the greatest golden age or one of the greatest golden age painters. Um, Do you think that he looked back at self-portraits of himself in his 30s and, and thought the way you and I look at photographs of ourselves in our 30s? Probably. <laughs> probably. Do you think he did this in order to keep a record? Do you think he did this because he didn't have anything else to paint that day and he wanted to paint? Oh, I mean, we've talked exactly about this before, Bill. I don't know if you remember. Um, I'm just trying to, you know, keep it fresh. Yeah, I just... In, in context of time, I, I think that he probably, he was using his own image yeah. just because it was available to him. Sure. Uh, 
But I do wonder, you know, thinking of Rembrandt sitting at home and surveying, if he ever did, I don't know if he ever did, I don't know if all the portraits were collected together or kept in the same place or if they'd already been fired out to different patrons or buyers, but I can imagine a man in a dark room <laughs> or darkened room, a brown room, looking at all these self-portraits and, and having a very similar feeling of kind of an ache of nostalgia, of heartache, of regret, um, that we might, if we, you know, whiz through our photo reels. Sure. Um, and I did that even just uh, yesterday on my phone, it comes up with like photo of the day. And I clicked on my photo of the day because it was a big photograph of my own face. I'd taken a, a, a selfie. I don't take selfies the way I see lots of other people doing them, but sometimes I'll make a record of what I'm wearing. I don't know why I can see it in the mirror. But anyway, I saw it was a picture from 2020. It would have been in lockdown. And I I immediately go into comparison. And we talked about this earlier. You know, there's lots of things to do with time where time is perceived to be very cruel because it takes things away from us. Mm-hmm. You know, it takes away our our loved ones. Uh, it takes away our youth. But you know, what does that really mean? But most visibly, it takes away the way we've looked and the foundation of how we perceive ourselves. Which is ironic because we should perceive ourselves exactly as we are. Yep. Um. But time enables comparison. And as such, it's very cruel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Time also takes away future. You know, you're you're using up gas in the gas tank. Mm. I talked yesterday with a group about, you know, imagine, imagine if you were born knowing when you would die. That it wasn't left to chance. If we would be different. That's a age old uh, thought experiment of which I generally don't like to think because it makes me crazy. I know. What did you come up with? Just if we go for a minute to that, you know. Sure. We hear all the time, you know, live every day as if it's your last and. You know, what would you do if it was your last day? And most people say, I'd go and hug my family or, you know, I'd say sorry to someone I was mean to. You know, all these things, it's a kind of almost quite plaintive, really. And it's feeling, you know, why do we not actually think that every day is our last day? Because we really don't know that it isn't. True. I don't know, we uh we I think we somewhere in our brains we don't think we're ever gonna die. Cause all we've ever known is living. We don't remember not being here. We're not gonna remember not being here at the end. But isn't it amazing that there's all this time, much, much, much more time <laughs> of us not being than of us being. And yet we're so afraid of it. Yeah, I think we're not afraid of time. I think we're afraid of, I don't know what other people think of us. I think we're afraid of making mistakes and having to live with those things. I don't know. I wonder, oh, like, you know, Rembrandt had a crazy life, you know. By the time he painted this, I mean, he, he'd made lots of <laughs> Hadn't yeah. he? And he uh, made lots of money and lost lots of money. And, you know, like he's, he'd been up, he'd been down. Uh, he had to take a lot of crap jobs in order to make a living. I mean, these, these portraits, the later portraits are described as powerful. Um, see, I don't know. I, I see them as sort of lonely and contemplative. 
Yeah, and maybe are they resolved in that, not just resolved artistically, I mean, sort of psychologically, is Rembrandt resolved at the end of it? Do you think we're ever resolved? Um, there are some people that I consider to be quite resolved. Uh, not just resolute, but actually resolved. You know, sometimes I, yeah. I have had... They're finished, one... they're complete. Yeah, I, d I did know one lady who died of cancer, and I was with her very close to the end. And in the hospice, she spoke very beautifully, lucidly, eloquently about, not about her own life, but just about being. Uh, I don't know if this makes sense. And it struck me that um, there maybe had been fear at some point about what was coming. But there is also just a complete sense of peace with it. Yeah, I think my grandfather was like that. My father was more scared. He hadn't he hadn't resolved yet. Mm. But yeah, it's true. It's a uh... yeah. I don't know where I'd stand actually. But wouldn't it be amazing? Again, thinking about time, you know, time is many things. We, we've said already. Time is change. Time is cruel, but time is also death. Yep. And, and we really need we need to die to every moment. Yeah. There's you know, we could be very mournful about everything, couldn't we? Because all of it slips away into the past. Yep. Nothing and is anything until it's over. Hmm. Are you going to start taking self-portraits of yourself until you're 63? No. Are you going to come back and take a portrait every year of me until I'm 63? I want to take some good portraits of you. I'm unsatisfied by the portraits I took of you. Oh, my goodness. Well, Bill Woodman. We've still got several years to go, I hope. Yep. <laughs> I hope. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Cut to us 83 years old doing this. That'd be awesome. Mm, wrinkly. 